Okay, let's loosen up. And shake out wrists and elbows and shake the whole body. So if you saw my message this morning, my email, uh, you can imagine where I'm at as far as the reopening issue because things are changing rapidly. And now the governor has moved up the uh, end of social distancing to the 28th of May. Yeah. But won't be ready to reopen that soon, so, uh, <laughs> but, uh, the day before yesterday, it was the 15th of June, the target. So, and that had only been announced last week. So, I was planning to run the summer semester to the middle of July. That was before the seminars were canceled in California. So, I am now Things going to- Things are fluid, who knows what'll happen in two weeks. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I'm wondering, uh, well, uh, you know, what could happen in the interval? And uh, I don't feel any really urgent need to rush back. <laughs> and now I'm thinking, well, maybe we'll start facing in live classes uh, in the second half of June, uh, or July. Well, let's loosen up the waist. Yeah, and people that live far away can still do virtual. Yes. And so, you know, there's the other issue. I have to prepare for that and transfer the video studio to back to the school. <laughs> so. And I. I cut off the internet all oh, back, I think, last April or May, a year ago, to save money. And I'll have to get that reconnected so that we can stream from the school. Person joining us. Good morning, everybody. If I were going to rename Chi Elements, which I'm not, but if I were going to, or if I needed a name, I would call it Yima School, which if I got the tones right, would be One Horse School, Yima. <laughs> because that's, the, that's what we're doing here. I'm the video technician, the camera operator, and the performer and instructor, and video editor as well as janitor and so many other hats. Okay, bring the feet together, we'll loosen up the knees.
reverse directions. And now the ankles. reverse directions. Now the other foot. change direction. All right. So as you know, if you got the reminder email this morning, uh, I promised the eight pieces of brocade. <clears throat> so, we will get started on that. And the first piece is two hands to hold the heavens to regulate the San Gel. San Gel, or triple burner, is this torso and the upper respiratory apparatus. <clears throat> and the healing sound or triple burner is she, she. <clears throat> Remember, it sounded no sound, but I will be making it louder um, than uh, normal because I want you to hear the sound and remember to make it very softly yourself. We can put the heels together to help improve your balance, or we can keep the feet hip width apart to help maintain the balance. And since I woke up with a little bit of vertigo today, <laughs> I'm going to keep my hip width apart. Uh, and here we go. Uh, return to childhood breathing uh, with the eight pieces is fine. Gently expand the abdomen as you inhale and gently push down on the pelvic floor or perineum. It's an ancient Chinese secret. No kidding. And gently uh, Pull in the abdomen, gently lift the perineum as you exhale. Okay. Interlock your fingers, inhale, exhale, and lift up your heels, hold for three seconds. Inhale, come down on the heels, exhale and bend to the side. Inhale, come back to the center. Exhale, bend to the other side. Inhale, come back to the center. And exhale, and healing sound for triple burner. She. In and out, up on the toes. In, down on the heels, out. In, out, in, 
and out and sound. In and out. In. Down on the heels. Out. In. Out. In. And out. Now, if you. If you've got the breathing pattern, you've got the movements, and you want to go at your own pace, feel free to do that. Exhale out. Inhale in. Exhale out. Inhale in. Exhale, and then just area of the triple burner relaxes, feeling sound. In and out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out and sound. One more, then we'll do the variation. Okay, so the variation. After we do half or two-thirds of the normal version, which we just did, now the variation in and out, in, come down, turn 45 degrees to one side and bend on that axis, exhale out, inhale in, Exhale out, inhale in. Now come back square to the front and turn 45 degrees the other way and bend on that axis. Inhale in, come back to center and exhale at healing sound. In. And out. In. 
Turn 45. Exhale out. Inhale in. Come back to the front. Turn 45 the other way. Exhale out. Inhale in. Back to the front, exhale, and shh. In and out. In. Turn 45, out. In. Out. In. Back to the center, turn 45 the other way, out, in, out, in, back to the center, out, and sound. All right, let's move on to piece number two. Left, right, bend the bow like shooting a hawk in the air. And we change stances. So for the sake of a elegant performance, the instructions are to step out with the right foot to up to a double shoulder with horse stance. Okay. Um, don't, don't step too far. Um, step this far and knees kind of cave in. For some people that's too far. It's getting to be too far for me now too. So. Not too far that your knees end in like that. And of course, if you're in front of the camera, now you're off center, so I have to recenter myself. But that's not part of the routine. So left, right, bend the bow like shooting a hawk in the air. Sword secret hand will simulate the arrow. So you see um, index and middle finger straight, but locked and then uh, ring finger and little finger bent in and thumb on top of the nails of the ring and middle uh, little finger. Okay. So inhale, exhale, squat down, tuck the buttocks under. Feel like you're pulling a very strong bow. Gaze off in the distance like shooting a hawk in the air. Now inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up. Let me show you the side view so you can see buttocks tucked under. In. Out. In. Out. And then we continue. In, out. The farther you squat down, the more of a workout you'll get for your legs, but be careful, of course, to respect the limitations, your limitations for your knees and other body parts, and only you know what those are. Continue. Tucking the buttocks under helps to strengthen the waist and kidneys. And pulling the very strong bow, of course, helps to strengthen the back and chest. In, 
out in and out now variations imagine the hawk is very high in the air Now, as I do these variations, uh, I'm trying to keep st a stable center from the waist down, okay, and do the bending and twisting in the waist, not with my legs or my knees, okay. So, in, out. In, out, in, out. Now imagine you're on the boat and you're bow and arrow fishing. In, out. In, out, in, out, in, and out. Now you're on horseback being pursued by outlaws. Uh, now remember to keep the feet flat on the floor and the knees pointing straight ahead. And do the turning in the waist and hips. Okay. So in, out, in, In, out, in, out. Now, you're on horseback and you're pursuing outlaws. In, out, in, out, in, out. Okay. So the variations, you can feel that they make a different effect on the uh, organs and the channels on the outside of the body, plus this turning uh, movements uh, work the belt vessel, which is responsible for your guardian chi. It's your transmitter, if you like, for your guardian chi. Now, for elegance of performance, we step the right foot back into hip width distance. But now I have to recenter myself, so. Left, right, lift singly to regulate the stomach and spleen. But I like to call it the liver and spleen because I think it's maybe less confusing for people, particularly Qigong beginners, because we're using this healing sounds for liver and spleen. Okay? Uh, so it's important because of the healing sounds that we stay on the same side. So when I raise my left arm, then you'll raise your left arm. And when we lower it, I will make the spleen sound. Likewise, with the right arm, when we lower it, we'll make the liver sound. Remember, the spleen sound is who, who, H U. And the liver sound is shu. If you see this written in pinyin, it's going to be X U. 
but the X is uh, pronounced like S H, so it's shoo, shoo for deliver. Um, anything else I need to say about this one? Um, just remember to stay on the same side as me. In and out. Feel as though both hands are pushing against length resistance, but don't lock up, okay? Hold the position in, out, and when you feel the area here, in this case, the spleen area, relax, make the healing sound. In and out, both hands pushing against slight resistance. Hold the position in, out, and when you feel the area around the liver relax, make the liver healing sound. Shoo. In and out. In, out, and then sound. In and out. In, out, never healing sound. In and out. In, out. In and out. In 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 out. In and out. In. Out. Shoo. Okay. Now we'll do the variation or the enhancement, as I call it sometimes. Uh, let me ask first, though, if you were aspiring to be a Qigong teacher and the student were to ask you, why are, we holding, why are we holding the position? We're not holding the breath, okay? We're holding the position and breathing in deep, <laughs> deeply. So why is that? So remember that this, we have this manipulation. We have this stretch of the organ, liver in this case. So the organ's being stretched, but then we inhale deeply, not all the way to bursting and tensing, of course, but say maybe 90% of capacity where normal breathing is 70 to 80. Diaphragm drops down and massages the organ. And actually, massages all the stuff that's below the diaphragm. So it adds an extra, uh, extra manipulation uh, of the organ to generate the local chi and help. Um, improve chi circulation and break up chi stagnation. Okay. 
the enhancement. I'm going to raise my left hand in and out and turn to my left. So everybody have their left hand up and turning to their left. Hold the position in, come back to center, exhale and now raise my right hand in and out. I turn to my right in, come back to center, exhale and liver sound in and out. Still both hands pushing against slight resistance in. Back to the front, out and through. In and out. In. Back to the front, out and through. One more round. In and out. In. Back to the front, out and through. In and out. In. Back to the front. Out and shoo. I let the low hole gates face each other for a moment. Sometimes you feel chi flowing from one to the other as the two sides of the body balance their energy. Okay, so that's uh, piece number three. And turning to the side adds an enhancement whereas the stretch was vertical in the regular way of doing things in the beginning repetitions. When we turn to the side, the stretch is now up, diagonally upward, okay? And we still have the inhaling or holding this position. All right. Piece number four, five injuries and seven illnesses. Uh, turn, look behind you, they'll be gone. So we stay in the uh, hip width distance for this one. Uh, five injuries are the injuries to the five yin organs, not counting pericardium, which sometimes is considered a yin organ and sometimes not, but it's a special organ. So. Um, lungs, heart, liver, spleen, and kidneys. So, and the five injuries to those organs. Uh, the seven um, illnesses are from the seven uh, evil emotions uh, that can injure the organs um, if held uh, too long or too strongly. Mm -hmm. What else do I need to say about this? In dealing with the five injuries, we turn the head to the side. You can feel the muscles tense here. They run down the front of the neck and run under the rib cage. And now I can feel this going all the way down to here. Muscle tensing. Or something going on there anyway. It's massaging the organs all the way down to here. Three parts for this one. First part, hands on the hips. Inhale. Exhale, turn to the side. Look behind you and visualize your illnesses and injuries left behind. Inhale, come back to the front. Exhale, turn to the other side. Look behind you. Inhale, come back to the front. Be sure to keep your shoulders square to the front and do the turning in the neck, not in the waist. Okay, so this is really working the neck. Exhale out. Inhale in. Out. In. If you know Yang Chuan breathing, the uh, first time uh, I learned this from uh, Dr. Yang, he included Yang Chuan breathing. And so if you know it, you can add it to this exercise. 
exhale out. Inhale in. And continue now at your own pace. Okay, now I think I mentioned it has three parts. The second part is like this, that the body position changes and we have the hands on the back with fingers pointing towards the spine and the thumbs on the outside of the waist. So what does this do? Chest is opened up, expanded. And the back is re uh, relaxed. So the conception vessel and the three channels that are on each side of the conception vessel, these are stretched open, whereas the governing vessel and the three channels that are on each side, or both sides of the governing vessel, are relaxed. Um, then, of course, it makes a difference also with the uh, way the uh, muscles move in the neck and under the ribcage. Exhale out. Inhale in. So everything else is the same as before. Exhale out. Inhale in. If you pay attention under the ribcage here, you can feel a little bit different feeling, a little bit stronger feeling up here with the muscles under the ribcage tensing as you turn in this position. Okay, and then the third position is like this. So shoulders down and relaxed, not up there. The um, hands there are well, a little bit lower than the solar plexus level, so I don't want them too high or too low. So about right here. It's like you're carrying a, you know, I don't know, a baby wrapped up or something like this. Exhale out. Inhale in, exhale out, inhale in.
Okay, there is a possible enhancement to this exercise if you've got more time to practice. Let's exhale out, hold the position, inhale, exhale, and inhale back in. That's going to about double the time it takes to do the exercise, okay? Now, piece number five, uh, sway the head and swing the tail to eliminate the heart fire. Um, and um, lung metal cools heart fire, so we have heart and uh, lungs in play here. So we have a choice of healing sounds, so like air leaking from a balloon for lungs, or like a dog panting for the heart. Summer season, energetically speaking, has started, so let's use the heart sound. Step the right foot out to up to a double, uh, or a double shoulder with horse stance, and, uh, just for the camera. Squat down, place your hands on your legs just above the knees, thumbs on the outside to open up the lungs. Inhale up. We're going to make the healing sound every third round. So on the third round, we're going to exhale. And, okay. You can make it every round if you have more time for the exercise. In, out. Press down with the hand on the knee. Turn, look up, turn your head, look up towards the ceiling. Hold the position in. Out, start back to center. In, start turning to the other side. Out, finish your turn, press down with the hand on the knee, and look up towards the ceiling. Inhale, exhale. In, out. In, out. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. Out. Okay. You know the reason we don't make the sound when we're here, right? Because there's too much tension in the chest when we're bent over like this and pushing down on the knees. So the sound would be unable to release the energy because of the tension we have to straighten up. Chest relaxes and then we can make the healing sound and the energy will release. Okay, let's do another round of three. In, out, press down with the hand on the knee, look up towards the ceiling. In, out, in, out, in, out. Don't let your head drop down in the middle. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. One more round. In, out, in. Out, in, out, in, out, sound. Remember, when you make the sound, your uh, mind, particularly in case of the heart, starts in the heart, but only stays there briefly visualize 
this energy releasing from the area of the heart up through the chest, and also stale energy and excess heat releasing out through the mouth. Okay, piece number six. Um, now, the number of repetitions that's recommended in Dr. Young's materials has been, is 24 through pieces one through five. And if it's bilateral, that means 12 to each side. And in piece number four with three parts, 12 to each side in each of the three parts. When we come to piece six and piece seven, the recommended number of repetitions is 16. Um, piece number six, two hands to hold the toes to strengthen the wasted kidneys is unilateral, so it's 16 repetitions. We won't do that many. So feet, uh, we step back into hip width distance from piece number five. In, we'll use kidney healing sound. Tray, tray. In, out. In, out. Bend down, reach knees, ankles, or toes as far as you can. Pull up. Inhale, exhale, inhale, straighten up, exhale, press down with your palms and make the healing sound. Just the idea maybe just pressing down like you were pressing. Maybe if you were standing waist deep in a swimming pool and you had a float, press it down into the water like that. Pressing down, but not tensing. So in, out, in, out, in, out. Inhale, come up, exhaling. Let me show you the side view. In and out. In, out. Back as straight as possible as you bend down. Pull up on knees, ankles, or toes. In, out. Inhale, come up. Exhale and In and up. In out. Pull up. In out. Inhale, come up. Exhale. Try. In. In, out, inhale, come up, exhale, and try. Now I'll show you a couple of enhancements. In, out, in, out, bend down. Keep breathing. Pull up, keep breathing, shift your weight from side to side. Again, don't hold your breath. Now inhale, come up, exhale, and try. In and out. In, out to bend down. Pull up on the toes. Shift your weight from side to side. Continue to breathe. Then inhale, come back to center. And come up. Exhale and try. One more enhancement. So in 
and out, in, out and bend down, and grab the your left heel with your left hand and your right hand on the outside of the left foot, twist, and then the other side, twist, continue to breathe, twist again. Come back to center, inhale, come up, exhale, and try. Okay, so with the enhancements, as I was saying before, maybe do uh, one half to two thirds, three quarters uh, of your intended repetitions the uh, first way, the unenhanced way, so that you can loosen up easily. And then if you uh, want to do the enhancements, do the remainder of your intended repetitions as you add the enhancements. So the enhancements come after the uh, regular way of doing the exercise because they're more strenuous. Okay, piece number seven. Uh, left, right, screw the fist and punch with fiery eyes. Don't forget to fire the eyes. Step the right foot out, you up to a double shoulder with horse stance. Mm -hmm. Recenter myself. Again, don't, don't go too far. This is too far. My knees are caving in. So now, squat down. Inhale. Exhale. Punch and glare. In. Out. and glare. Let me show you this side view. In. Out. Screw the fist. Punch and fiery eyes. Remember, don't tense the arm. Leave a little bit of bend in the elbow. Inhale, come up. Exhale, squat down. Buttocks tucked under. Screw the fist, punch with fiery eyes, in and out. In and out. All I can tell you for this screwing move is practice. Watch and practice. You get the feel of coordinating from feet to fist. In and out. In. Out. In. Out. In, out. In, out. Don't forget the fiery eyes. You are a tiger, okay? Not angry, but you are very, very spirited, okay? This is important um, for your health that you raise your spirit. So and my, my whole scalp is tingling from that fiery eyes bit. That's what you want. Last piece, uh, hundreds of illnesses, so uh, wait and see later, they'll be gone. Has three parts. The upper body positions are the same as in piece number four. So we start with hands on hips. Hip width stance, toes pointed straight ahead. We exhale and raise the heels, hold for three seconds, inhale and come down. So exhale up, inhale down. I'll show you side view. In.
Yeah, the first time I learned this, um, in the 90s, uh, 1990s, uh, we did all the repetitions with the toes pointing straight ahead. Then in 2008, Dr. Young added these enhancements and really improve this exercise and make it a lot easier to do. So, the enhancement is uh, that you turn, you do like one third of the repetitions with the toes straight ahead, and then turn the toes out and do another third of the repetitions. Exhale out or up, inhale down, exhale up. Try to be honest about the three seconds. Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale down. And then the remaining third of the repetitions, turn the toes in. Exhale up. Inhale down, up, down, up, down, up, and down. Okay. Now, if you wish to finish the exercise, you can go on to the other two parts, this position in this position. Um, now piece number eight, we go back to the uh, number 24 for the recommended number of repetitions. So that would mean if you intended to do all 24, eight with the toes straight ahead, eight with the toes pointing out, and eight with the toes turned in. You may have to train up to that, okay? Uh, in each of the three parts, okay? Uh, so, that's piece number eight. Very good for the legs. Are there questions, comments? You've done something really wonderful for your health today with this. Oh, so your your head remains the same position, and you do this. No, that's uh, when I do that, my knees go too far forward. So, yeah, my head goes up. Um, so yeah, I would say that you should try to um, adjust so that you raise your head uh, and not do this because now this tenses my whole leg. I don't know, maybe better work out for the legs, but uh, it's, it doesn't really, feel good to I've, me. I've got a lot of weight backwards, so that that, that's, 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very, very nice. nice. Very nice. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you for this, Roger. I, I'm tingly from my scalp to the soles of my feet. It pieces is excellent. And I feel like I, after so much practice and repetition, I feel like I'm finally knowing it enough that I can focus more on the energy flow, which is really exciting after so much work. Yeah, so what, what Grace says is an important point. Uh, you could try to learn every Qigong you ever saw. That would be a bad thing to do. You should have a few that you know really, really well so that you can do them without thinking about what am I supposed to be doing? And you can do them with feeling what's happening inside. 
what's happening inside. So you're, very, you're no longer, your mind is not focused on, okay, what do I do now? Raise toes, hold three seconds, toes pointing forward, now toes pointing out. No, you have that all ingrained and you're all oh, feeling, feeling. Pay attention to the body. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's what you want. Yeah, I'm tingling, I'm tingling too, Grace. Yeah. <laughs> so I that, have a quick question, Roger. Yes. When we did the, um, the liver and spleen one, do, what organs of the body do they control? I'll tell you what happened first. My knees were so bad this morning, I thought I wasn't going to come. Because I, ha I have arthritis, and it, you know, depending on how much rain we've had, yeah. it can get pretty bad. And honest to God, as soon as we did that exercise, my knees didn't hurt anymore. They honestly don't hurt at all right now. Wow. And I, that's what I'm there. What is there about that particular exercise that would affect my knees? Okay, so look at where, if you look at a, a, a acupuncture chart of the channels, look where the liver and spleen channels go. Right to the knee. Right, yes, up and down the legs, yeah. So the spleen, actually spleen points are used for knee pain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for heaven's sake. Yeah, so you're improving the chi circulation in your legs. Uh, liver, yes. Uh, liver controls ligaments and tendons, right? Yeah. Well, I tell you, that exercise did it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, glad to hear that. So it works, and there's your reason why. So as Grace points out, the, the, the liver's in charge of the small muscles close to the joints, the ligaments and tendons. Spleen is in charge of the large muscles but also spleen meridian points are used for knee pain, um, as are stomach meridian points, because they go on each side of the knee. So there you are. It circulation improves. Yes. So. That sounds like, when you say that, that's why you do the eight pieces of per cave in that particular sequence, because you start when the exercises you start cumulative from beginning to end. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, that's why it's in the order that it's, that it's in. It was, that's uh, been uh, deliberately thought out. Well, great. So you find the benefit and also you know why you have the benefit. So it's really good because now you, you, know, you see why it works and you'll have greater confidence in it and you'll be more predisposed to do it because you say, oh, it makes sense to me why this is happening to me. Yeah. Great. So thanks for well, coming, thank everybody. I and mean, I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll Bye. see you next time. Super. Have a great Good rest of your class. weekend. Good class. Thank you.